How's it going everybody? Ad Ricker here, and this is the Insta360 Go 2. Well, actually it's just the charging case. This right here is the Insta360 Go 2, a very, very small action cam. It's a little bit bigger than the original Insta360 Go, but it has better specs. Namely, it can shoot in 1440p video, which is, I think, a must in 2021 for action cams. It is also waterproof. I didn't get a chance to really dunk it, but as long as you keep the lens guard on, this is waterproof. When you first get the Insta360 Go 2, you'll see it's just kind of chilling out in the box when you take off the top cover. Once you tug on it, you realize it's not really attached to anything. It's magnetically stuck to something inside the box. As you go further in, you see it's stuck to this necklace mount. Now this necklace mount is pretty awesome. You put this thing around your neck, dangle it down inside your outermost clothing, and then stick the Insta360 Go right to it magnetically. It's a pretty awesome way to mount the Go 2 to your clothing without having to rely on some sort of clip or a sticky mount or something like that. Here's a clip of me walking with this mount in place. Here's a clip of me longboarding with that same mount. As we dive deeper into the package, we see the charging case that I referred to earlier. We also see a couple other mounts like this clip mount, which you can use for like a maybe a baseball hat. And then also you have this other mount. This has a wrist strap and it's designed to serve two purposes. So if you're gonna be using the Go 2 around or underwater, you're gonna use this particular mount. You take off the plastic piece on the bottom, however, and that becomes a sticky mount, which you can use for like your vehicle. Here I'm using it on the side of my vehicle, driving around as well as my windshield, which works out really, really well. Um, I'm really interested to see if we could record while I'm driving like this and see if it's actually a usable clip using that little sticky mount on the inside of my windshield seems to be working pretty well. Opening up the charge case, that also connects magnetically. And if you look in there, let's pull it out one more time, you'll see the charging connections on the back of the Go 2 connect right here uh, in the charge case. So when you do that, you're now charging the Go 2. So the Go 2 has its own battery, and the battery isn't a terribly long lasting battery, but it's there. And then the uh, charge case has a much more beefy battery, both for charging as well as for using this just like this. Um, there is a threaded mount on the bottom as well as your USB port, but the threaded mount could be used with say, a selfie stick, Insta360 selfie stick. And so if you connect that to the charge case and record with the Go 2 inside the charge case, you can now use it as a selfie camera. So here I am with my longboard, selfieing around. <laughs> they thought of everything. There is a built-in tripod. These two little legs flip out like that. It almost looks like a bug now, some sort of beetle. And uh, yeah, now you can shoot from your desk. Here's the view of the Insta360 Go 2 on my desk here with the built-in tripod of the charge case. I'm also using the microphone from the camera. Now, right off the bat, I do see that the microphone of the Go 2 is kind of uh, blocked by the case, so I'm not sure what kind of audio I'm getting out of this. There is a little pinpoint hole on the top of the case, so perhaps I'm getting great audio because audio is coming right through there. But anyway, we'll know as soon as I'm done recording this. I'm also monitoring what I just did there on my phone using the Insta360 app. So you can connect to this and you can see what it's seeing. There's no real monitor, no screen, no LCD or anything except for this little display here which doesn't show a picture. It just has text. So you don't really know what it sees until you connect to it with the, the, the app. We see pro video at the bottom as well as video. We also see photo. We see night shot, interval, star lapse, which is interesting. So that'd be like a low light outside type of thing. I have not tried, look how bright it is. Um, and then let's go to the right, time lapse. So we can record a time lapse, time shift, HDR video, slow-mo, and reframe live, which is apparently a live stream function. I haven't tried it yet. Let's go back to pro video because that's where I like to hang out the most. Um, pro video is where you get the most options when you take this footage from the camera onto your computer and you use the Insta360 Studio software, which is a whole nother video in and of itself, but I'll give you a sneak peek. Pro Video allows you to change your aspect ratio, edit certain things, export it a certain way with a certain color look perhaps, as well as affecting the stabilization, whether you're using 
the baked in normal stabilization or the improved flow state stabilization, which you can use with horizon lock as well as FPV mode, which I use quite a bit. If I'm using this uh, go-to with perhaps a drone like this, uh, the Beta 95X V3 with a Insta360 mount on the top, very important to shoot in pro video mode. If you shoot in video mode, that's different. It's applying a different stabilization protocol or whatever it is, and it doesn't work well with high oscillation machinery like, like a drone, especially the higher you get with the prop, like the bigger you get with the props. A five inch quad like this, like the Armiton Marmot with the Insta360 Go mounted on the top is pretty much disastrous if you're shooting in video mode. You gotta shoot in pro video mode if you plan to use this with the drone. The video mode itself was doing pretty well when I was doing longboarding or walking around. Some of those more normal type uh, you know, shots and some of those more normal applications, you can get by with video mode. The interesting thing about pro video mode is it shoots kind of in this circular sort of thing. They're, the sensor is bigger than the aspect ratio that you select. So when you look at the footage and especially the thumbnail, it appears circular. It doesn't appear rectangular like, like video normally does for us. You put that into the Insta360 software and then you're able to manipulate it all you want with all these different aspect ratios. Sometimes I do want to just shoot in video mode and not have to worry about post-production or importing it into Insta360 Studio software. That's a whole nother step, considering that I'm then going to import that into Premiere mode and likely and edit the way that I'm used to. So to do it with two different softwares is a bit cumbersome for the post-production process. Now, unfortunately, pro video mode comes at the expense of perhaps battery life. So you're squeezing more capability out of the camera, out of the recording that is taking place, your battery life is gonna suffer. So battery life, it says you get 30, 35 minutes perhaps of recording time. Uh, in pro video mode at 1440, at 50 frames a second, you're probably not. Uh, you might only get maybe 15, 20 minutes, which is a bit of a bummer. So you gotta be careful and you also gotta make sure that whatever you do, you pack your charge case so that in between sessions, recordings, flights, whatever, you pop it back in your charge case, which has a lot more battery juice. And then keep it like that for a couple minutes, let it charge, check on it in a little bit and see it where you're at with your battery charge. Now let's go to the top of the app and check out what kind of frame rates and resolution we have. We have our 1440 as well as our 1080. You also have, um, let's see, uh, frames per second. 24, 25, 30, and 50. Now, in the United States, we're gonna probably be hanging out around 30, perhaps 24, and then if you're in like United Kingdom, Australia, some of those places, you're gonna be doing 25 or 50. And so in the United States, usually if you wanna get something that's a higher frame rate, higher than 30, we bump up to 60. We don't usually bump up to 50, so it's kind of interesting we only get 50 here. 50 is kind of an odd one to pick, uh, at least in the United States and some of those other countries that rely on NTSC video. You also have your ratio, the aspect ratio, your 16 by nine or nine by 16. Nine by 16 would be more like Instagram perhaps, TikTok, something like that. You go back and you select 16 by nine. In the middle of the app, we also have our field of view. Do you want it wide? Do you want it action, which is a little bit more stretched out, fisheye perhaps? Linear, which kind of squeezes everything back in a little bit, still pretty fisheye, and then narrow, which really zooms in on the image, and we don't get nearly as much fisheye, but we also don't get nearly as much field of view. I was shooting mostly in wide, um, but perhaps also maybe action. The beauty about pro video mode, you can also select that in post-production. What you wanna use, you can select that in the Insta360 Studio software. So you also have your color profile. So whether it's gonna be standard, or Vivid, which is going to bring out the colors a little bit more. And then Log, which is going to be shooting a lot more flat. So flat color profile is good for if you want to do some color grading. And I did do one flight in Log color profile and I applied my own lookup table. Well, it was, it was really Insta360's lookup table to the footage in post-production and it looks really, really awesome. Um, you can kind of tweak it a little bit more because you've taken away the color uh, in the recording, and then you can kind of add it back in the way you see fit later on. One thing I noticed about the auto exposure of this camera is that it's not terribly fast. It seems like it's a little late on the reaction time. So if you're going from a dark environment to a bright environment, or say you're in a shadow environment and then you go out into the sun, it takes a second to 
adjust, to auto expose for the new environment, and vice versa. Coming back, uh, you know, into a darker space takes a while to brighten back up, and that was a little jarring for me. Um, I'm tempted to use manual exposure sometimes, but at the same time, if you're going around, you really, you really need some sort of auto exposure to work with you to make sure that you can get a good exposure from environment to environment if you're moving around. So how does the footage look? Well, it's again, it's 1440p, but it's not terribly clear. It's not the clearest action cam, even at 1440. I've seen better. But for the size and the weight, it's impressive. Um, there are some ways to decase action cams to get them down to the weight of the go-to, but that's a lot of uh, effort, and perhaps that's also an expense, especially if you break it in doing so. So to get something from the manufacturer that is this light is pretty awesome. There's 29 gigabytes of internal storage. When you do plug this into your computer, you'll see that in the recordings, there's a high resolution version of the video and a low version resolution of the video. The, the low version resolution is more of a compressed version that you're gonna be able to see on your phone. You can bring it up easy over the Wi-Fi connection with the Insta360 app. That's not what you wanna use when you're editing. And so when I first plugged this in, I thought, oh my goodness, why is, why is all of my footage in low resolution? It was because I was looking at the low resolution clips and not the higher resolution real clips that it recorded. So the question is, can you vlog with this? What is the audio quality? We've got a street over there. Um, and I'm just kind of talking. I'm realizing as I use this more that you kind of need the phone to traverse the settings in the device. My phone is way over there, which means I can't do a whole lot until I get back to it. Now there are four different customizable ways to press this button. There's one button on here. There's two buttons on here. So it's a very simple thing uh, without the phone. So with the one button here, you can program it to do certain things. If you hold it, press it twice, press it once, that type of thing. Make sure you know where your pro video and your video mode is. I just select single press and double press to pro video mode because that's really all I intend to do with this is pro video mode at the moment in time. One thing that I noticed really benefited the video, especially when I was shooting in FPV mode with an FPV quad, is using filters because I think it's very important to use uh, neutral density filters like these from Freewell Gear to allow the camera to slow down the shutter speed a little bit, which I think is improving some of the jitteriness of the FPV quads anyway. So even in flow state stabilization, FPV mode wasn't perfect and I was still getting a little bit of wobble. There's a lot of different factors there. So to add neutral density filters to the camera, basically what you're doing is you're replacing the, the lens guard on the Go 2 with one of these little filters right here, and it darkens the image, lower its shutter speed to allow for more motion blur. A little bit more motion blur might help with that type of thing. So when I was shooting with an ND8, and especially an ND16, I was noticing that some of my cruising shots looked a little bit more smooth. And so, Insta360 is being very generous and they're allowing anyone to purchase through my link in the video description or the top pinned comment from now until September 6 to get a free pack of neutral density filters. I will say flying with an action cam this light on an FPV quad, especially a five inch, is a pleasure. It's so light, you know, it's almost like you don't have anything on there at all. This is just a 3D printed mount that I found on Thingiverse. I 3D printed it with my printer. So I like the camera because of the 1440p. I like the camera because of the Insta360 Studio software, the capabilities in post-production, the flow state stabilization, which works pretty well when working, when working in tandem with an ND filter kit, the plethora of mounting options, and just um, the amount of thought that they put into this to make sure that you can put this on pretty much anything. There's even like audio options for processing so you can isolate the voice. There's a little breeze because I have the windows open. I'm also driving like 20 miles an hour, not too fast, but just wondering if it's something that we could talk and carry on some sort of video conversation, if you will. Will this suffice? I don't know. We'll know soon. It would be nice to have a better battery life. And honestly, I wouldn't mind if they had made it a little bigger, a little bit heavier, and squeeze a little bit more battery life out of it. It's already a little bit bigger than this predecessor, the original Go. Just make it a little bit bigger and squeeze another 10, 15 minutes of battery life out of this. 
I think that's probably the point that I, I dislike the most. So you're not gonna get the clarity and the resolution and the color science of a GoPro, let's just say it, but you are getting a small form factor action cam with a lot of capability and a lot of mounting options and just ways of using this that are impressive to say the least. You just have to learn how to use it, how to get it to be most effective for your particular purpose and use, and just keep that charge case nearby because you're gonna need it multiple times if you go out and use this thing. Thank you so much to Insta360 for sending this to me. Check the link in the video description to purchase this along with that free ND filter. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Until next time, happy flying and action camming, recording, whatever, longboarding, your choice.